Thanks everyone for coming out. Appreciate you making the effort to come down to the Coburn Arc um, uh, to hear an announcement that we're incredibly pleased about at the football club, and that is that the club and our senior coach in Justin Longmuir have agreed uh, an extension of his current contract to the end of 2025. Um, we've got great belief in what we're building here at our club and Justin's drive, determination, vision, very much aligns with uh, where the club sees itself going, both in the next couple of years and beyond. Um, those of you that do know Justin, and I know there's a few in this room that do understand um, what a unique grasp he has uh, on, on the technical aspects of the game and what we see inside our organisation is someone who's unbelievably passionate about teaching it in a way that's as effective and impactful as it possibly can be for, for his players. Um, his drive to get better himself personally, but more importantly to create an environment uh, where our people, players, coaching staff, um, uh, football staff within that department can get better and be their absolute best um, is, is something to see. And uh, as much as anyone within the organisation, we've got a lot of these people, but JL's absolute determination to do what he can, everything within his power to help us achieve what we want to achieve is, is something that we're used to seeing, perhaps um, many on the outside don't. So um, most of you in this room are aware that we made some changes uh, and, and alterations and enhancements to our football program at the end of the 2023 season. And like every decision we make, they were done um, or made uh, with a mind to giving ourselves the best opportunity for, for our, our club to achieve sustained and, and ongoing success. Um, and with that in mind, it made a hell of a lot of sense for us to extend, extend Justin um, for, for the next two years, two seasons, and allow us an opportunity to embed what we've done over that off season and look forward to a, a, a long future together. So I'm gonna hand over to JL to answer a, a couple of questions and then stick around if you've got any for me after that. JL has to go and run the main training session. So I might hand over to you, mate. Go ahead, mate. Questions? How, how do you feel? Uh, well, obviously the announcement was uh, coming and you probably knew that, but um, now that it's here, how do you feel? Oh, yeah, extremely grateful uh, to the club. I like, said to the staff, I, I love this club and I love my job uh, and yeah, I'm really grateful for um, the extra yeah, year on the contract and really excited about what we can achieve over the next yeah, two seasons. So, yeah, grateful, excitement. That's about where it sits at the moment. Big applause from the players I saw downstairs, that vision. Uh, how did that feel? When the <laughs> Very uh, embarrassing. I, I don't like the attention on myself, so... It was a uh, pretty awkward uh, couple of minutes when they tried to yeah, blow the roof off the off the players' lounge. Um, yeah, but I've, I've always felt support from the players, always felt support from the hierarchy at the football club and all the staff, so yeah, it was nice to hear. And it gives, do you feel like it gives you clear air, no distractions now, just to bowl on through to what the club's like? I think it takes away some of the distractions. Um, yeah, I... I Really grateful for the uh, public support, I guess. Like, like I said, I feel like I've been supported all along from the hierarchy at the club, but I feel yeah, the public support now is, um, yeah, allows the, to clear up a few distractions and, and allow us to focus on what we need to focus on. Does it put the pace back in the tube, to use your quote from a few weeks ago? Oh, no. I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, uh, you know, I'll, yeah, like I said, I've always felt the support internally um, and probably stops a little bit of the noise um, externally, but not really worried about that either. Um, yeah, uh, it doesn't relieve any pressure. Like well, I think as a senior coach, um, you know, you go into every game um, with a level of expectation and pressure and it doesn't really change that, but just gives a little bit of security. And like I said, I'm really grateful for the public support. Just on the security, I spoke to you a few weeks ago and you're talking about the new AFL landscape, six months of payouts on contracts, etc. Mm. You thought that we were headed the wrong way in that direction. Can you just expand a bit on that? Oh, yeah, I just think um, the game's got to look after its people. Um, you know, we expect, as senior coaches, we expect scrutiny um, for our performances. Um, you know, we, we, we take a few bullets when things aren't going well for the, for the club and that's part of the job. Just think... Um, you know, as an industry and as as clubs, we've got to support um, the people within the within sport, and I think senior coaches play a big role. So, 
they deserve that level of support. Can we duff do you and ask any more or can we talk footy now or you guys all right? Yeah. You know, the footy? yeah. So we just saw the team. So mm. Cox is in or and Frederick's definitely in the eighteen. Yeah, well, it's a unique situation because we've still got to do main training. And we've decided to train in the afternoon and the squad needs to go out now. So probably got you know, three or four guys that need to get through training to cement their spots. I think there are some levers we can pull to change the squad if needed. So we'll get, we'll be, they, if, yeah, Fredericks, Cox, um, and a couple others need to get through training. What do they have to do to convince you they're right? Uh, some will be on different levels of load. Um, so pretty much hit their individual loads. Um, some will be on full training. Some did most of it Tuesday and, and only need to do a light session today. So, um, yeah, hit the specified loads and, and show that their um, yeah, skills and um, craft is up to a level that's going to stand up against a really good side. A couple of debutants do you have announced, though, haven't you? Yeah, McDonald and... Uh... Yeah, McDonald and Sharp will both play their first games for the club. So, yeah, like I said to the players just then, when we announced the squad, I've been... Um, wrapped with the way they've gone about it. Um, not only you know, their ability to learn their roles, but they've just got to work. Um, really impressed with the way they've um, gone about everything they've done, whether it's in the gym, building relationships, um, you know, out on the track. Um, pretty much neither of them missed a session all, all pre-season. So um, really deserve their opportunity and they're going to play really important roles for us come the weekend. So McDonald will play if Cox is proved fit? Yep. Yeah, he'll play. And what's your reaction to Lockie Neal being out? Oh, it's yes, he's a good player. Yeah, he's won a couple of Brownlow so he's, goes all right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you don't you don't get too excited by that situation because <laughs> they've got a lot of depth through the middle of the ground. So it really just puts your attention onto the next guy. Then you know we sort of deal with midfield groups as a collective, and um, it's still really strong. So. Um, yeah, hopefully our players aren't relaxing. Is it an advantage for them to have played the game already? And uh, would you have liked them to lose the way they did? Uh, yeah, I'm not really tied up in the result. I, there's some pros and cons of, of playing um, a game already. You know, clearly, you, you, your fitness and um, execution um, enhances with every game early in the season, but they've lost a couple of pretty um, important players as well. So there's some pros and cons in it. So round zero, you like round zero then? Well, I'm, I'm all for the concept. I think um, bringing footy to the northern states um, is a good concept. Um, I still think there's some things you need, we need to work through to make it um, even for all clubs. And just one last one for that. Um, Reedy in the squad, extended squad, how conscious are you of Luke Jackson the workload on him now with Darcy out? I'm definitely conscious of it. Um, yeah, and yeah, we, we need him in a couple of areas as well. So we'd love to have two of him. Um, and that's why, you know, Sean and Luke are such a good combination because um, they're both, you know, top of the top of the rung in terms of their playing their roles in the AFL. So, um, you know, I think Jacko can do a good job for us in the ruck if he's required. We think he can do a good job down forward if he's required, and yeah, we'll settle on the team after training. Simon, why only one year and why now? Um, and so, uh, second part first, Duff. Why now is that's when we've finalised it. Obviously, these things take a bit of time um, and you work through them to a point where, you know, negotiations end up coming to a, to a cease and parties are happy and you move forward. So that was finalised only in, in, in recent times. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that, um, you know, there has been a bit of change within our footy program over the last six months. And, you know, whilst JL is a critical part of that and clearly at the very front of it, um, we're incredibly pleased and... Uh, and bullish about the collective group. We th I'm certainly a believer that whilst you've got people in senior positions and they play critical roles, it'll be the collective that'll help us get to the level of success that we want to get to. So, you know, there was a bit of us working through what that looked like over the off season. Um, you know, we've got an amazing amount of faith in JL um, and we think this this period um, is, a, is a good time frame for us to continue to work on what we've been doing. He, amongst a whole bunch of other people, have worked incredibly hard over the last four years or so to build that group that I, I, I just touched upon. And so we're pretty excited about what that might be able to achieve in the next two seasons. Given the nature of AFL contracts, ironclad guarantee he'll be here to the end of next year, Justin? 
Sorry? Well, well, given the nature of AFL contracts, you know, in six months, clauses, etc., absolute mm. guarantee. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, you yeah, enter any contract, um, particularly when you just confirm one, that's the absolute intent. And, um, we've done that for a specific reason and we want JL to ensure that um, he's incredibly focused and enthusiastic about the job he's got at hand. And uh, that's the plan and the plan is quarters that it goes well beyond that. That's certainly what we're hopeful of um, down the track, but we'll work through the next two seasons in particular. Was this done several weeks ago with the aims of timing now, releasing it now? I won't go into specific detail, Duff, but we, no, there, there wasn't anything um, strategic about holding anything off or anything like that. Um, it was a process that takes time. Um, you know, probably in an ideal world, I would have liked it to have been a bit earlier, but you just got to work through these things and they take the time that they take. And you've got to get to a, a point where all parties are satisfied and um, we, we certainly are and I know JL is. So um, it, it's, we, we announced it when, when we had a finalise. So, so it sounds like you, you, you you see it going well beyond 2025, why not a longer contract then? Or why not hold off a contract if you are sort of hedging your bets on 2025? Do you understand why fans might be a bit sort of confused as to why it's only one year? One year? No, I, th I can understand that it's probably not as standard, but um, I think when you look at senior coaches' contract extensions after their initial term, they're generally two years or two seasons. Um, and the fact that we've announced it now isn't doesn't mean it's not something we weren't thinking about for an extended period. But we wanted to to work through the off season, um, have a look at some of those changes that we made in real time, uh, and then you know have the detailed discussions with Justin. So, in ac actual effect, it's two full seasons, um, which is very similar to some contracts I think that were extended you know towards the end of last year. So, we think it's a, an ideal time frame for, for JL to settle in and go to work and. You know, for us as a club to responsibly assess how we're going and where we go from there. It's a brilliant. It's brilliant by the club. And do you have the feeling that it's great by J Lo to accept that too? Because he could have held out and said, "I want five years, or whatever." But he's he's actually done the right thing. He hasn't. Um, yeah, I, I mean, everyone's you know, got their, their, they can make the decisions they want at any given time based on the information that you have, Barra. Um, you know, we we couldn't be more aligned as a as a organization um from chris our, our our new president and board uh my relationship with jl joe who's come in as agm of football entire staffing group so these are constant conversations and talking about what things could look like and how that might work for individuals as well as the, the club and and that's the main point that um every decision we make is with the best interest of the overarching club in mind and and jl has been uh, as as big a proponent of that as anyone, you know, there's been there is times where senior coaches can sort of err towards um, shorter term outcomes and, and perhaps shorter term fixes that might assist them um, uh, more so than the club. But JL has constantly been um, a, a massive proponent and supporter of us making decisions that will help us contend on a sustained and, and long term basis. There, there has been noise, Simon, um, whether it's real or imagine was that a factor in doing it now there's always noise stuff in, in in this game you know that as well as anyone um i mean from our perspective there's there's, there's, there's going to be pressure um there's going to be noise there's going to be discussions regardless of what jail's contract status is so of course you take a whole myriad of factors into account when you're making these decisions and you know i'm, I'm I'm not going to suggest that that isn't something that doesn't, you know, um, register some interest, but it, it certainly wasn't an overriding factor in our decision. And our decision was that we think it's a it's a really suitable amount of time to commit to someone that we've got a great deal of faith in, and we're looking forward to seeing how that rolls out. It looks from the outside like the departure last year in particular didn't hurt the club in the long term, but might have hurt in the short term, mm. maybe younger and smaller. Mm. Is there an acknowledgement in this that maybe you do? Some extra time, um, that's sort of part of what I was referring to before. That, that um, JL and in his nature, um, you can see how uncomfortable he is when he's being talked about in a in a glowing manner. Um, he he extols the ideal or the anchor that we have of club first better than anyone. And so when we're assessing some of those decisions that we've got to make that could aid, you know, potential outcomes and performance in the short term, he's always been about what it means to try and achieve something that in reality our club never has is that you know decade or more long period of contention um so um, that's why we think you know providing an additional amount of time 
at this point in time is, is the right thing for us, the club and, and JL. You guys shouted this uh, himself from his side of it, uh, other than the length of contract, uh, Andy do is it a uh, big driver, hard bargain? Uh, he's 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 very um, wily character. There, Steve. No. Um, oh, look. You know, you. I think you guys know and you see. Uh, JL is one of the more genuine people that you that you can come across. Um, I think in post match press press, he he answers questions. He doesn't dance around. Um, he's he's got a, a way of explaining the game, and what you see is what you get in that sense. So, um, you know. Being really open and transparent with him the whole way through is, is sort of the way we, we operate and he was like that through these discussions as well. Your faith in Justin is clear. If you have a season like last season and you've now committed to him being here to the end of next season, yep. have you backed yourself into a corner a bit there in terms of maybe having the opportunity to look around for someone who could take the, the playing group to where you think it should be? No, I don't think so. I think we feel we've got the man that we genuinely believe in. Um, for these next two seasons at the very least and we're genuinely optimistic and clearly hopeful that it's going to be far beyond that so um when all things were, were considered and you weigh up all options we are really comfortable and excited with this announcement today